Nutcrackers had its world premiere as the opening film of the 49th annual Toronto International Film Festival, and admittedly, I ended up liking it a lot more than I thought I would. Going into it, I was expecting a lot of what I received. It is heavy in tropes. Certainly, we have seen the general story before. In this film, we have Ben Stiller, who is a city slicker who has to go to a rural farm to take care of his nephews after his sister has passed away. So, of course, we have this city versus rural dynamic. We have the hesitancy to care for these children and then, of course, falling in love and wanting to take care of them. We have some hints at star-crossed lovers coming from different situations. All of these have been done before and they are certainly present in the film. So I understand some critiques of Nutcrackers potentially being a little bit of a hallmark film, but I think that's a little bit disingenuous. To me, what David Gordon Green is able to do with Nutcrackers is toe the line between this hallmark style film while never actually crossing it. Yes, the beats of the film, the general narrative arc is something that we've seen many times before, but it's within the minutia of the story that Green actually does subvert some of these tropes and some of our expectations. For some background, David Gordon Green is the director here. He kind of broke out onto the scene with a smaller film initially in George Washington. He moved on to projects like Pineapple Express and more recently directed some films in the Halloween franchise. Also, as mentioned, this film stars Ben Stiller returning to leading man role after taking several years off. He's kind of talked about this needing a break, pursuing some other uh, passions within the film world, notably directing, kind of uh, being the force behind series like Severance, for example. But this script kind of spoke to him, and he decided that it was the right time to get back into the lead seat. Now, Ben Stiller was great here, but he wasn't given a ton to kind of showcase his craft His character is fairly stock, I will admit, but he was great. The real stars of this film, though, are the four Jansen brothers. They had me laughing so hard throughout this project in a way that I haven't really been laughing at too many movies in 2024. Their performances are very reminiscent of the performances in a smaller film from, uh, well, technically last year, but kind of trickled out. Uh, in 2024, which is Riddle of Fire. The boys, the Jansen boys, who are our real-life brothers, are clearly not trained actors. But it's exactly that that allows them to showcase their charm and ultimately represent the chaotic nature of adolescence in a way that trained actors wouldn't be able to. From a sex ed discussions with Ben Stiller's characters, they've really got this nailed down. They understand that boobies plus privates equals babies, but it's the -the off-the-cuff comments, the actions and behaviors in the background that are really tough not to appreciate and enjoy. Beyond that, they are also trained in ballet, which is another way that Green kind of subverts these classic tropes. Yes, there are some dance numbers, but instead of being super cheesy and oftentimes the dancers not even being the actors themselves, these boys actually can dance. And the eldest in particular is quite proficient at ballet. And so when we have this kind of switch in the story and we get to see these Uh, seemingly rough rural men, uh, boys, putting on their ballet shoes and dancing. It's actually pretty cool. 
I also appreciate how, despite leaning into certain trope beats when it comes to romance, it wasn't ever forced. This arc was acknowledged and intentionally kind of left up in the air because it wasn't as central to the story as the relationship between Stiller and these boys. Look, I'm the first person to put on my hoity-toity hat and make all of these comments about Hallmark films and not really being true art. And I understand that Nutcrackers might not be your typical festival film, but that doesn't mean that it's not enjoyable and it doesn't mean that it's not good. Green takes a story that has been done before, but puts his own little twist on it, mostly as a result of the Jansen boys performances. Is it a best picture nominee? No, but that's also okay. I went in with fairly low expectations and ended up really enjoying myself for a couple of hours. Oh, on an aside, before the film even started, we had a group of protesters uh, kind of march almost to the stage and in the most Canadian a security response ever. The security just calmly walked behind them. The speaker on stage uh, noted that we support your freedom of speech, but we are in fact trying to start the festival. They made their way through the theater. I couldn't quite make out what they were saying. Uh, I know that they were referencing RBC, one of the main sponsors, and shouting genocide. And then we quickly segued into a discussion of Pineapple Express and Tropic Thunder. So what a way to start off TIFF 2024. If you like this one, uh, make sure to subscribe for more TIFF coverage. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be putting out some more uh, videos, some more reviews on uh, some of the most notable films playing at this year's festival. Uh, like and comment too. Cheers.